Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. Before we get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsors of this video, SeatGeek. Now, I'm sure we've all heard about these guys. If not, you're about to hear about them now. SeatGeek is a ticket app that takes out the confusion of buying tickets. They use a 0 to 10 rating system on each seat. Green meaning you got a good deal and red meaning you got a terrible deal. And the backbone of this channel, my supporters, you guys, can get $20 off of your first purchase by using my promo code MOJO99. So I'll leave links in the description and all that if you plan to go watch an NBA game. Game, so you can go ahead and go crazy anyways let's talk about the reason why you clipped this video all right so as we all know every single year in the NBA there's always maybe one two or three teams who end up being much better than what everybody expected last year those teams were of course the Pacers the Utah Jazz and the New Orleans Pelicans once big cuz went down with that injury now there are several factors as to why some of these teams took off out of nowhere and started doing well for the Utah Jazz and Pacers case newborn stars came completely out of the blue and were birthed within their organization. So either a player comes out of nowhere and goes insane or we might just simply be sleep on a team. And 9 times out of 10 that team that we sleep on tends to have outstanding team chemistry a great system in place and at least one star player. For example the Pelicans last year. When DeMarcus Cousins went down I promise you nobody gave those dudes a real shot at making the postseason we all thought it was wraps and that they were going to pack their bags home early but as it turned out, the Pelicans happened to play better without him. And that was because of their fast-paced play with AD at the 5, their great switchable defense, and their A1 team chemistry. Those are the two main reasons why certain teams blossom out of nowhere in my head. This year, I can honestly see a couple of teams off of my list perform much better than they were made out to be prior to the season. So let's see what my list is talking about. It was a great run for Milwaukee to force a game seven, but they're going to come up short, and they'll have lost nine consecutive playoff series. The Milwaukee Bucks have made a huge change this offseason, and not a lot of people, like myself until now, have really taken into account how great this change was for them. Now, this change did not occur on their roster. This change was made within their coaching staff. I believe Mike Budenholzer and the rest of his guys will actually utilize the talent that he has on the Bucks and squeeze as much potential as possible out of Giannis Antetokounmpo, Eric Bledsoe, Chris Middleton, and Malcolm Brogdon, and Thon Maker, I guess. Now, you may be looking at me and be thinking, what the fuck is this man talking about? But look, I'm not boosting this team for no reason, I promise you. I'm a Hawks fan, all right? I've seen what he can do. Now, don't worry about what he did last year. That That's not his fault at all. So scratch out last year and pay attention to what he's done prior to that. If you look at the three good years that he's had with Atlanta, while he was here and we had a decent roster, he won on average 50 games. I remind you that he did this without no real star player. If we're being honest, he just had a bunch of super solid role players, excluding Millsap, to work with. He didn't have no true start a coach. Jeff T, Kyle Korver, Damari Carroll, Paul Millsap, Al Horford. Like, that's a good team, but like, it ain't much. All of those players that I just listed never had and never will have the amount of talent that Giannis Antetokounmpo has. So now that the Bucks have an actual coach and Mike Boonhoser, former coach of the year by the way, has a roster with a legit superstar and a borderline all-star on it, the Bucks could very well surpass expectations that people have placed on them. Last year, the Bucks struggled with three-point shooting mightily. And in today's league, as we all know, for the most part, your team must do well in that category if they want to have a better chance at being one of the top teams in the league. The Bucks were a bottom five team last year in three-point attempts, while the Atlanta Hawks, on the other hand, were top seven in three-point attempts last year. Even though that we're buns, that's still something that Coach Bud can implement in Milwaukee a couple of years ago, back when the Hawks were really good. I'm pretty sure that some of you guys remember that the Atlanta Hawks were getting called the Spurs of the East. People were calling us that because of our constant ball movement and our tough defense. Coach Bud is a great Great coach and great coaching is something that Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks have not had at all. So because of the new addition of Coach Bud and the culture that he brings along with him, and the addition of Brooke Lopez as well, the Bucks could finally become serious threats in the East. Now, hey, I'm not saying they'll become monsters next season and surpass the Celtics, Raptors, and Sixers. Chill. All I'm saying is that this team right here isn't the team to underestimate. 
and out. Final seconds, Oladipo's shot is good with eight tenths of a second remaining. Cavs inbound. And it's on to the second round. The Cavaliers take game seven. The Indiana Pacers, it's kind of weird that I have them on this list, huh? Because last year they already surprised a lot of people already. But you know, for some reason, I still feel like the Pacers have another level to reach this year. The Pacers have an extremely well-rounded roster. And in my eyes, they do not have any glaring weaknesses. Now, the Pacers this offseason really didn't make any huge moves. Most people probably think that all the Pacers had to look forward to this summer is Miles Turner and the massive leap that he's about to take this year which is sort of fair I guess to say but this one signing has been swept under the rug basically and it's Tyreek Evans the dude who had a great bounce back year last year in Memphis an average 19 5 and 5 on 45 percent shooting from the field and damn near 40 percent from three on nearly six attempts per game the man has completely revamped his game and is ready to produce for a winning team now I personally do not think that he is going to start. I think that the Pacers would rather use him off of the bench. And I could see him doing all types of second units in the NBA dirty all year. And he's more than likely going to become a sixth man of the year candidate. Now, just Tyreek alone isn't going to be enough to push the Pacers to another level. As I said earlier, Miles Turner is bound to have a breakout year too. The combination of those two, plus Oladipo and everything else the Pacers have been building on, will make them much better than they were last year. The Pacers, just just like the Bucks are definitely not the ones to underestimate. Miles Turner is more than likely going to have a breakout year this season. Tyreek Evans is about to be a stud bench player. And Oladipo and the crew are about to do some damage. Oklahoma City is... They're just so upset that they did. The Oklahoma City Thunder. OKC was obviously, hands down, by far, and it's not even close, the most disappointing team in the league last year. And due to that, I don't think a lot of people take them as serious anymore, which is pretty fair and understanding. But OKC this year could be much better than what most people think. Not only were they able to get rid of Melo, who was basically useless for them last year and was a hole on defense and offense, they were somehow able able to turn that into Dennis Schroeder. Now Dennis, you know, he, he's not a star, but he is an above average NBA point guard who can start on a handful of NBA teams around the league with ease. Dennis is probably happy as hell and more than willing to come off the bench for OKC because of how many L's he took over here in Atlanta last year. At this point of Dennis's career, I'm sure that he just wants to win and he'll be doing more of that in OKC. I really like this trade by OKC because it allows Russ to chill and not go a million miles miles per hour every single night for 35 plus minutes. Russ is damn near 30 now, and his play style won't necessarily mix well as he ages. So Dennis does not only help him now, but later on to the future as well. So this Dennis Schroeder trade is a major W. Last year, the Oklahoma City Thunder had Raymond Felton as their best bench player. And uh, Raymond Felton did a pretty good job, but like, if we're being real, that's a tough scene. Raymond Felton is not the dude to rely on to carry a bench. This dude is built like the sofa in my living room. I'm sure we can all agree that OKC will not get too far with this dude. Dennis Schroeder was not the only plus for OKC this offseason. Sam Presti also went out his way and scooped up Neurons as well for the low low. Neurons so far in his NBA career has been really disappointing and he's been kind of weird too. But he's still young. He's only 24 years old. He's a very low risk high reward type of signing. OKC these last few years have been struggling to find a solid backup center. And as of recent, they now have Neuros Noel for that job, which was a great choice. If you keep up to date with Neuros Noel, you'd know that he's all about that bag. So this season, that means that he has no choice but to perform at a high level if he really wants that check. With that being said, I expect him to have a really nice year. These three things that OKC did this summer, receiving Dennis Schroeder, trading away Melo, and signing Neuros Noel well, enhances their team as a whole. Oh, and also, all the expectation and pressure that they had on them last year will be non-existent this season. Not as many eyes and critics and all that will be watching OKC compared to last year. So all that pressure and expectation relieved from them will help them a lot. Now y'all, I heard that Russ may not be available at the very start of the season. So that means they might struggle towards the beginning. But as time goes on, I feel like they could easily turn things around and prove a lot of 
of people wrong. Depending on how long Russ is out, I honestly think that OKC will be no less than a top four seed in the West. The moves that OKC has made this offseason were excellent, and the pressure that was once upon a time on them is non existent. Three seconds, one second. The Denver Nuggets, I ain't gonna lie, I feel kind of bad for these dudes because they're always this, this close to making the playoffs, but they can just never get over the hump. This year though, I am damn sure that that will change. The way that Nikola Jokic, Gary Harris, and Jamal Murray have been progressing these past few years has been a sight to see. So due to the natural progression and also Paul Millsap's full healthy return, the Nuggets in my eyes have the potential to become a top six team in the West. Now, whew, trust me, I know, that sounds kind of crazy. But if we look at a little bit deeper into things, it won't sound as wild as you thought. If everything goes Denver's way, I think a sixth seed is very attainable for them. The Nuggets are gonna be an exciting team to watch, and they could make some noise and surprise a lot of people this year in the West. The last two teams on my list are the Memphis Grizzlies and Dallas Mavericks. Now, as some of you guys know, I've featured these two teams on plenty of my past videos. And at this point, you know, I just be repeating myself and I don't like repeating myself so I'm gonna keep this super short the only reason the Grizzlies were so bad last year was because of the loss of Mike Conley so since they sucked they were able to get a top five pick out of the NBA draft and that pick as we all know turned out to be Jaron Jackson Jr. who I am very high on myself dude is the power forward version of Klay Thompson just to keep things short and simple that sounds kind of weird and wild to say but that's what he is. He's an elite quick trigger shooter and a hellacious defender. The Grizzlies really could make the playoffs this year and surprise everyone who was asleep on them. I mean, you know, I've been playing professional since I was 15. And I think it's advantage, you know, I've been playing and training with the players that have been in the NBA. They're great in Europe and especially to learn from all those guys. Now on to that boy Luca and the Mavs. The Mavs have a very solid team and they have two future all-stars leading that battleship. Now to be honest, I don't know if they can make it into the playoffs. But what I do know is that they'll be damn near close to it. Alright you guys, so this is the end of the video. Bucks, Pacers, Thunder, Nuggets, Grizzlies, and Mavericks could be one of the teams next year to shock the world. Off of this list, I think at least two of these teams will exceed expectations. And if I had to bet my life on it, I'd have to say it gotta be the Bucks and the Memphis Grizzlies. So anyways, yeah, this is the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think about my list and this video down below in the comments. I really do appreciate you for watching and supporting my videos. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and share this video as well to your friends, family members, and everybody. I appreciate you for watching, and uh, I'll get right with you.